The serious outlooks on public participation brings us closer to Colombia today, a country where more than 79,000 children live in institutions warded by the state. When coming of age, they need to become integrated in society like any other regular citizen, but in their particular case, they are totally alone. They lack any kind of support. Michael Londoño is a youth leader that left the national protection system where he stayed from 8 to 18 years old. He's the founder and CEO of ASTEP, an association that accompanies and helps these teenagers to make them fully self-reliant. His uh, remarks will be key to understand other forms of participation and he will be explaining all of this to Marta Lora Tamayo Balbe and Antonio López Peláez, both professors at UNED, whose task is to show us the full meaning of public participation from many different angles. Welcome to this new program of the participatory group. You know that this is a partnership agreement between the City Council of Madrid and UNED focusing on participation. More than 50 cities are part of the participatory group, thanks to the City Council for their support. As usual, we will be interviewing a very special guest. For 20, 25 minutes, we will be hearing Radio Wisdom in this very polarized uh, society that is so focused on the short term and individuality. Let's think about the context. Let's focus on those who are in a most vulnerable position and how can participation help us? Thank you, Marta Lora Tamayo, Professor of Administrative Law and Co-Director of the Participatory Group. Thank you very much, Antonio. I'd also like to thank our technical group since we've already broadcasted 100 shows, 100 compliments to them. Now we would like to talk about those who represent the capacity to innovate and to generate collective participation dynamics based on their experience. Michael Londoño, chair of the Association for those exiting state protection of the ICBF, the Colombian Institute for Family Wellbeing. It's an honor for us to interview you. It's my pleasure. Thank you so very much for inviting me to this space where I can disseminate about the work of our association in Colombia and how it's impacting the lives of the youth and their context. You are doing an impressive task in the association of youth exiting state protection. We have seen several interventions in our shows and workshops about youth participation. I invite you to look them up on ra on the radio, on our website, about the complex process of teenagehood. But as a first question, for the thousands of people listening to us to understand, Michael, could you please explain to us what ASTEP does? First of all, if you allow me to, I'd like to provide you a little bit about the context of the ICBF, the Colombian Institute for Family Wellbeing, and what they do in Colombia to prevent and protect the youth and uh, children. The Colombian Institute for Family Wellbeing works on the comprehensive protection of early childhood. This is the first place that youth and children go to when they are at risk, when their rights are vulnerated, when entering the ICBF, the Colombian state establishes the rights from two strategic lines of work of the Colombian Institute for Family Wellbeing, promotion and protection. From promotion and protection, they work with early childhood teenagers, youth, communities, healthcare professionals, etc. Et Protection is the area where the ICBF works on the adolescent criminal responsibility, establishment of rights and adoption. What do we do from our association? This is a group of youth members that lived institutionalization for many years far away from their families. In this context of institutionalization, they lived some good and some terrible experiences. And when exiting foster care, we decided to gather and to create a space for 
girls and boys to feel listened to when they can build networks, connect with one another. That's how the ASTEP Association came to being, the Association for those exiting state protection. We give tools to children and youth so that their transition to self-reliance is a bit easier so that we work on strengthening alternative care in public policy so that we can transform institutions and so that children and youth can live more dignified lives. Throughout the past seven years of the association, we've managed to take this problem to the national and international level. We have participated in the European Union sharing about this problem in the Data World Forum. We've gone to the UN to a high impact political event about not leaving anyone behind and helping those without parental care. The 2030 agenda in we want this population to be prioritized. We have managed to shed light on the importance of accompanying these youngsters so that they can as I was saying before, live a more dignified life and their social and work inclusion might therefore be much more successful. Thank you, Michael, for your summary. I resonate with uh, your remarks, but as you know, I'm a jurist. So at the end of the day, I try to catch those references to not only vulnerability or violation of rights, which is something we hear about a lot, but also this idea that you were talking about reestablishing rights, a restoration or healing culture. I think that this is fascinating. On the other hand, and I find this even more insightful, and that's why I think it's worth noting, because Michael will later tell us about his personal experience, but pay attention to the humility with which he's talking about his association. This network stems from a group of teenagers that had lived similar experiences and want to help others even more, those who need to get involved and enter these structures and networks. We talk a lot about multi-level governance, public-private cooperation. We love these buzzwords that come from administrations, but when you see this reflected in a process of the sort, I'd say it's uh, spectacular. There's an official public structure, and then a civil society structure comes to being. Tell us a little bit about your life experience and what's the role of participation in this promotion effort. There's a sentence that we say a lot, talk about your book, which means talk about your life. How did you become a representative or how did you get so involved, get your hands dirty thinking, well, people helped me out, now I want to give the favor back to society. This is very important because in all public participation processes, it's important to talk about leadership. And you are the leader, the chair of the Association of State Protection Exit. Tell us about how public participation processes create bonds. Tell us about the initial group of people who decided to join forces and create the Association 7 years ago. Yes, this is very important, that feeling of agency. We need to transform our lives, but also the lives of others as a way to give back the favor to society for a slight improvement of this world that is so polarized, as Antonio was saying. From my personal experience, I see that participation for me has played a key role in and a cross-cutting role, both in my life and in the processes that we have undertaken, that I've led through the ASEP Association and my work with youth and children. Participation is crucial for the promotion of family well-being. And when I talk about family well-being, I'm talking about how all of this entails an active commitment of all members of the household, but also the other stakeholders surrounding families in decisions, in activities, everything that improves communication and how it can strengthen emotional bonds in this context. Now, based on my personal experience, 
children participation helps them feel more valued listened to and they can better solve their conflicts develop their skills and they can build a sentiment of shared responsibility what happens in the context of the Colombian Institute for Family Well-Being, we as youth have that have exited state protection, we want to help others in the same situation. We share this network to find better strategies from active participation to shed light on the impact of institu institutionalization for these children and adolescents. Experiences shared with the youth have allowed us to shed light on the problem, taken it to decision-making spaces at international level, as I was saying before. It has also allowed these children to feel comfortable sharing their most vulnerable side with us. We can share their message. We can help them out in other contexts. We want them to contribute from their experiences, their possibilities to transform a whole society that requires much closer involvement in these processes. Because indirectly, when a youngster exits a state protection program and they cannot integrate in positive protective spaces, the result impacts the whole society. It's like an investment from the state that is completely wasted. If they cannot integrate in society, they might get into violent groups, for instance. This is like a time trial bomb for society. At a personal level, this is what I understand as participation or the importance of participation in the midst of society. We are talking about a collective that is particularly at risk in Colombia. There are many underage uh, teenagers that are institutionalized, but especially those not institutionalized are living in an even harder conditions in the Colombian context where you work have you been able to see a reduction of uh, youth at risk tell us about the context you perceive what an important question Antonio after the pandemic the level of institutionalization has increased worldwide in Colombia significantly and this was very detrimental for families that had no other option but to send their children to protection centers as a last resort. In the past years, according to our trackings, and I'm talking from 2022 to 2024, the figure of institutionalized children in 2022 was around 74,000 institutionalized children. Today, We've slightly reduced this figure to 69,208 children in institutions in the process of restablishment of rights, among which there are 12,000 children waiting to be adopted. And out of these, only 7,700 children were, were relocated to a family context, which entails that we still need to work a lot to create new strategies to manage to open up options for these children to be adopted and for them to leave institutions. This requires the dissemination among families and getting to know families. It's important to understand the benefits for children when they are in a family context instead of an institution, how we can dynamize our community society. Civil society organizations like the Colombian Association for State Protection needs to carry out a complementary complementary work because this is a commitment of all stakeholders. It's not just about one agency, one institution. We need stronger networks working together to prioritize youth and children. We need to transform the system. We need to allow them to, to develop themselves, live a more dignified life, calmer life. And what about social policy? Is it a priority for the country? 
I hear about those tens of thousands of children in institutions. Does this reflect the whole problem, or is it even worse for the children who are still waiting to be institutionalized? Sometimes my perception is that many of these processes differ depending on their area. Rural areas uh, see more protected children. I'd say that the social policy in Colombia is very good. I'd say that's why we are benchmarks for many other countries in terms of children, well-being, etc. We have carried out two large efforts to find that protection and well-being of the youth of precisely this group and yet we still need to implement policies that are focused on strengthening spaces that are not institutions or institution based they need to be spaces that are grounded in family context and to take care of these children and teenagers in this surrounding in spite of all the advancements, we still see the fragility of the Colombian system in the midst of so much polarization and uh, self-interests. Often, institutionalization is a market for the best bid, and childhood becomes a tool. This is something that we saw at the start of the pandemic this system is focused on reestablishing and protecting the rights of children and youth and yet the practices exercised within these protection centers don't allow for that consistency between what is on paper and practice and for the development the integrated and comprehensive development and implementation of prevention and protection of violence in teenagehood. This is a huge challenge for us as a country, but not only for Colombia, but in the whole world. Colombia will be developing a ministerial conference where all the delegates from around the world will be coming to Colombia and the event will take place to talk about the end of violence against children and teenagers. This is a very important scenario for us, which is crucial for our state, for the state to shed light on institutionalization as another way of violence for children and youth, and that we need to move towards deinstitutionalization as a new form of care. We will be there talking as an association. I will be intervening, not in the main event, but a side event, because we need to talk about achieving deinstitutionalization as an alternative way to protect children and teenagers. How fascinating, Michael. We'd love to participate, to, to attend, even if remotely. Just to finish our interview, in the midst of all this work, is there a channel for public participation? Is there any means of participation for collaboration in an institutional way to change the model? Yes. This is a very important question, Antonio. At the moment, the Institute is quite skeptical to all of these things, but from our association as part of civil society looking after the well-being of uh, institutionalized children and children who leave institutions. We want to accompany not only children but also the staff, the caregivers and also operators, private operators hired by the Institute to look after institutionalized children and teenagers. What we do is complementary work, but taken on, as I said at the start, the design and promotion of public policy. At the moment, we're holding the second debate in the Republic Parliament, a program to work with different entities 
to create a comprehensive program of accompanying youth and children. This program is fundamental for the country, very important for our youth, children, and teenagers, because it will allow them to count on a program set by a lot to really support them, to help them develop themselves, to develop their life program, and carrying out a constant monitoring of something that wasn't happening so far until now. What we want is to monitor everything that is being done by the Institute. We are still undertaking the task to consolidate a program allowing us to do so. It is underway. We're just waiting to create more alliances with other stakeholders to strengthen all of this and to continuously monitor this organization to protect the youth and children of Colombia. That was fascinating, Michael. How fascinating to hear about your capacity to encourage participation among the youth, but to work together as associations to transform this dimension of civil society into a spokesperson for the youth. I'd like to take away two messages. If you are waking up in the morning, or maybe it's in the afternoon after your coffee, maybe at night, listen to these two takeaways. Participation helps communication and bonds within families, institutions, at work, and with the youth among teenagers. Participation, secondly, is a way to fight against violence in childhood and teenagehood. It doesn't only improve but protect those youth. It also has that preventative effect. It reduces violence, which is very important in such a polarized society like ours to reduce risk, reduce polarization, increase emotional well-being. These are outcomes that justify the listening of this episode. You might have paid attention to Taylor Swift's uh, Eras Tour, but think about these other kinds of problems. Participation improves our lives. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Martha, for being with us as usual. Thank you, Michael. What an amazing summary. Oh, I'd like to invite our audience to follow us on Instagram, we have a website, www.asthep.org. Join our campaign, Amigos Hacer, Making Friends. Amigos Hacer is about contributing from knowledge or contributing with funds with a very small contribution. This will really help improve the life projects of children and youth and families and the whole team working daily to improve these processes in Colombia. Thank you so much. Have a lovely day. Thank you, Michael. In case you didn't hear that properly, it's asthep.org for their website. If you listen to the program on the UNA channel, you will find links to all the social media and websites mentioned. Thank you very much.